Hey everyone, I hope you're all doing really great and ready for today's video. Now, The Diary of Tom Riddle has always been, in my opinion, the most peculiar horcrux. Okay, Harry being a horcrux also has a strong argument, but that was easily explained. The diary, however, was kind of a mystery as to how it actually works. There's so much more detail surrounding it than we're led to believe. Has anyone ever wondered what Tom actually wrote in the diary when he first got it? Or how about, out of all of the Horcruxes, why was the diary so poorly protected? No super secretive protection spell for it? Or how does it actually consume the life of the writer? That seems to be a big ask for something that's main function is to hold a piece of a person's soul. So guys, with that being said, I'm going to answer all of those questions in today's theory video. So if this is the topic for you, then stick around, get comfy, and please enjoy. Okay everyone, let's get this video started. So, the Diary Horcrux, as I said in the video's introduction, is more unusual than the rest. There seems to be a lot more to it that wasn't addressed during or after the Chamber of Secrets. There just seems to be a lot of questions surrounding it, which got me thinking. And when I get thinking, I end up looking for clues and most importantly, answers. But anyway, let's take a look at the Diary itself. Okay, so it's a pretty standard diary for the time. It appears well made. We know Tom purchased it from Winstanley Bookstation and Stationery on Vauxhall Road in London. Now it's not clear whether Winstanley's was a high-end bookstation, but the fact Tom had his diary personalised with his name on it says that it was constructed to last, meaning it probably didn't come too cheap. My own guess is that he bought it out of his own money, as the majority of his school books were bought with an allowance granted to him at Dumbledore's request. I also find it particularly odd that he didn't go to Diagon Alley for all of his stationary requirements. Anyway, let's continue. The diary was bought to write in, maybe for him to take notes in, or perhaps it was purchased as a personal journal for Tom to record his own thoughts in. The thing is, after 50 years, there was still no evidence of any writing in it. It was if the pages were as fresh as they were the day he first bought it. Which brings me to my next question. If he didn't buy it to write in, then what was his purpose for it anyway? Did he plan to actually enchant it? If we look at how the diary was used from the Chamber of Secrets, anything that was written on the pages seeped through and was sent somewhere. Now we later learned that everything written was being received by the Horcrux within the diary. Part of Tom Riddle was actually able to respond, but then that made me ask the question, how? How can the Horcrux within this diary have the ability to communicate with the person writing in it? because the diary was already enchanted beforehand as a means of communication. Anything that was written in it could be directly sent to Tom. Is it actually possible that the diary worked as a secret means of communication? It seems to be the only reason as to why there's not permanent ink in the diary, so the enchantment was enhanced by the Horcrux. If all messages written were originally sent to Tom when he was alive, then the remaining part of his soul within the diary could then communicate back. I believe it's the only logical explanation in terms of the communication purposes. So that leaves the question, how could the diary draw the life force from the person writing in it? Well, let's take a look. During his encounter with Harry Potter in the Chamber of Secrets, Tom Riddle revealed that Ginny had been pouring her heart into the diary, creating an emotional magical connection to it. Emotions are quite strongly tied to magic. Love, as we all know, is the most powerful magic of all, meaning this would not have worked on a muggle. Now, you may have noticed, well, most likely you'll definitely have noticed, that none of the other Horcruxes had life-stealing properties. And I believe that's because of one reason. The largest portion of Tom's soul was stored within the diary. Half of it, if I'm correct. 
Each Horcrux after that contained smaller and smaller portions of Tom's soul. So the diary was hugely important. It was because of it containing so much of Tom's soul that it actually had the power to restore him to a temporary body before making the transformation permanent. My question is, what would happen if he did indeed drain Ginny Weasley's life and return to power? Would he have only the memories of 16 year old Tom? Wouldn't that mean there would be two Voldemorts? Would his current spirit-like entity seek out his full-bodied form to merge with him? Meaning we'd have the handsome Voldemort once more. I think they'd merge. That's the only way I could see it working. I think that's why it was such a blow to Voldemort when Harry destroyed that diary. It was basically half of his soul destroyed, which took away half of his humanity. Now I do know some of you guys will say, well there's no way to say specifically how much of his soul was stored in the diary. But here's the thing, if we look at the concrete facts, it's pretty difficult to deny mathematical certainty. Murder splits the soul. The soul is whole, it's one piece, so if it's split once, that means it's split in half, into two pieces. That's math meaning one half was stored within the diary and the other half remained inside Tom's body. We also know that Myrtle Warren, aka Moaning Myrtle, was the first person Tom killed, so this all but confirms half of Tom's soul remained in his body. Now despite all that being said, I still know that there are some of you who will still disagree with that and still argue the fact that there's no way of telling how much soul went into each horcrux, but that is cool with me guys, you're completely entitled to your opinion. So was the diary horcrux the most important horcrux? Well yeah it was, it truly was, it contained a massive portion of the dark lord's soul and was able to do things that the other horcruxes couldn't. Well if that's the case and this diary was so important and powerful, why was it mishandled so badly? Why was it basically tossed around? No huge cave protection for it, it wasn't hid in a vault either or stored somewhere in the room of requirement. It doesn't make sense right? Well if you actually think about it, it makes perfect sense. What is the diary's power? To drain the writer's life force. Therefore, the purpose of the diary is to be found. It's not meant to be hidden away. It needs to be discovered by an unexpecting soul in order for it to be most effective. So the answer to the final question on whether Tom Riddle planned on it being a horcrux with a purpose? The answer is yes, he most certainly did. This wasn't a case of using the diary as a sort of trial object. He was far too clever to take such a risk. I definitely believe a lot of planning went into the Horcrux diary. On a side note, it also offers some explanation as to why Lucius Malfoy was so heavily punished by his master for his failure to retrieve the prophecy. It wasn't his first failure. The diary, the most important Horcrux was destroyed under Malfoy's watch. He planted it in Ginny's cauldron as a slight on Arthur Weasley. He could have chosen any other person, maybe a weaker willed person, maybe a person who wasn't so strongly connected to Harry Potter. Even if he managed to get the diary back as a whole before it was destroyed, that would have counted, but he didn't. So Voldemort finally returns to power and Lucius makes another blunder. I don't know everyone, what do you all think? Maybe that's why Voldy was so harsh on him. Let me know in the comments section below. Anyway with that being said everyone, that is my video on how the Horcrux diary worked and why it was the most important Horcrux of them all. Thank you so much for watching, it honestly means the world. Make sure to check out my video on the Riddle animated series and follow me on Instagram if you want to ask any questions. Be kind, be happy and stay strong in these difficult times. Thank you so much for watching, I truly truly appreciate your support. Everyone, notifications of uploads are more important than ever, so please if you haven't already, turn those notifications on to make sure you're notified the moment my video goes live. Making videos is what I love to do, it's my dream and my passion, however it does cost time and money to produce this content, so if you have a dollar to spare to support me on Patreon, in exchange for some exclusive unseen content, 
then you can click the Patreon link below or at the end of this video. Please only support me if you can afford it. And make sure to follow me on Instagram at InstaDNJ and on Twitter at Potter Folklore. Check out my other videos appearing on screen and please make sure, most importantly, to hit that subscribe button. Thanks again everyone and please have a great day.